Hello, welcome to The Outspoken Artist. My name is John Carlo. I'm here at Imaging 2024, and Sean Black is joining. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me, Jean Carlo. Of course, man, of course. Um, you're a coffee guy. You don't oh. have coffee on you. Tell me, why, what, what's going on with coffee? Um, well, don't have one with me right now because I'm already three deep. <laughs> that's not just regular cups, that's cappuccinos. Um, I needed to hydrate a little bit so that I can have more coffee later. But the whole story with it, I, I love the taste of coffee. It's not a caffeine thing for me. I drink one around 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and I go to bed. Right. But I got my own cappuccino machine probably about five or six years ago, and I started trying to do foam art. Failed miserably. And so I posted one, and everyone started treating them like Rorschach tests and <laughs> commenting as to what they thought they were seeing in my foam art. So I did it again a couple days later, and it became Sean's failed foam art and this sort of game show that I created. So every couple of days... I create something and post it, and it's become this sort of brand image for me, aside from photography, that people know me for. And when I don't show up with a coffee in my hand, they're curious as to, are you okay? That seems to be the perception. Everybody's like, yeah, you'll see him with a cup of coffee or a cup of coffee here and there. And I do follow it, and it's, it's hilarious because I'll see it, and I was like, shit, that's, that's what I deal with. I've tried to make the stupid little leaf, and... Oh. I just can't do it, and I admire every person that can do that because it takes a lot of work. Oh, it's insanity. Every time I started out was with the basic leaf, and then it ends up looking like a dinosaur or stuff that can't be mentioned. Of course. And uh, it's really interesting to see what people come up with in their own imagination with my morning beverage. <laughs> Tell me, Sean, what brought you to imaging this year? Uh, this year, I am here as a brand ambassador for Floricolor Albums. I've been using them for seven years, and they're one of my sponsors. So representing them in their booth this year, um, where I'm not on the speaking platform, um, I'm here basically talking all things boudoir in their booth. And for albums and boudoir, I figure those go hand in hand because they're complementary, right? Albums are generally the main product for a boudoir client because they're looking for that little black book or that gift traditionally that was thought to give to their significant other but the majority of my clientele are women that are doing this for themselves and they want to treasure and have something to look back on and say yeah I looked good at this age and anyone can do this the other thing that we primarily do um, is wall art and that is something that most people don't think of when they think of boudoir. And the way that we approach it is you'd put a piece of fine art on your wall. It may be a nude. If it was a Rembrandt nude or something like that, you'd have no problem displaying it. Why is it a problem now when you're the piece of art? And we've sort of broken down those barriers that now women are proud, men are proud, couples are proud to put their imagery up on the wall and celebrate themselves, their relationship, whatever it may be is that time in their life. How do you feel boudoir has changed in the last decade? In the last decade, um, it has definitely exploded as far as the number of photographers that are doing it. When I started back probably 2012, 2013 uh, time frame, it was, it was talked about there was uh, a good number of photographers, but now, especially where you can go about it in numerous ways. You can be very transactional, you're in it for the money, and you're looking to just run a studio, be profitable, move on, and you're not having any sort of connection with your clientele. The studio that we run is based off of my fact that I've now been married for 12 years. I have an 11-year-old daughter. I don't ever want my wife or my daughter to not feel beautiful or powerful or strong or confident, and I know that every woman I help see that sells that way in their imagery is sort of like that little pebble into the pond. It's going to ripple out into their network, which then is going to help start to change that beauty narrative overall. And where I shoot somewhere north of 100 women every year, it's more than just that one stone. We're making a little bit larger waves. Even on a local basis, it starts to make a difference. And then you start to see a change in the larger brands. So it is working when you've got so many photographers that are within this genre now. But Dua, I spoke with another Boudoir photographer earlier, and he was telling me all about the experience for 
the person that's coming for the session. It's not just you're coming in, you're laying down or sitting down, taking a picture. It really truly is an experience about that person. Can you walk me a little bit about what it's like to have a session with you? So with us, we want to have it as a luxury experience where we guide you from the moment you press book now all the way through to when you pick up your artwork at our studio comes in and you'll have a completely pampered experience on the day of your session where full hair, full makeup by a professional artist in our hair and makeup suite. Once you're done there and you're already feeling amazing, you get to come into the studio and it's a relaxed, very guided environment where I will show them how to do the poses if they're struggling and they'll laugh their ass off when it's my butt up in the air or <laughs> um, it takes the edge off. If you're dealing with someone, whether they be male or female photographer, that one is able to get down onto your level and show you exactly what it is and not think, well, no, why can't you do this? Especially being a male photographer, it really sets your client at ease and that's how I'm able to create the connection within the imagery that I do because we get down to know our clientele, what their wants and desires are of that imagery Anyone can shoot a pretty picture. I want my clients to see something deeper when they look at their own imagery. Can you tell me of a time where you had a session with a client that truly impacted them positively, of course, by going through this experience? Um, I have a specific client in mind. There's many, but this one, she's one of my older clients. Uh, she's now 66. She was 64 in her first session. She's done three sessions with me at this point. And in my old studio, I used to be on the second floor, and it was a straight line of stairs pretty much up to the landing right before you came into the studio. She was frozen halfway up the stairs and didn't think she could even make it into the studio. Finally got in there, went through her session. She came out like she could conquer the world. She works in a field that's heavily male-dominated. She works in animal control. And when she came back in for her next session, she told me about how... Her interactions with male counterparts and whatnot is completely different where she doesn't take shit from anyone, in her words. Like, <laughs> nope, I am a changed woman. I do not let anyone walk on me anymore. And you could see the confidence in her, how she held herself, how she walked into the studio. And her second session, she left beaming even more. Her third session, she came in and she booked it with her daughter, adult daughter, who she had shared this experience with and said, I want you to have this sort of confidence. And they booked back to back so that she could cheer her on at the same time that she was going to be in the studio. And to see that change in her own demeanor, but how she wants to impart that to another woman within her life, it's absolutely amazing to see. And her daughter's been back for a second session. How has Bedouin, like an experience like that, how, how does that change to you? It it means, me as an artist, it pushes me and it drives me. During the pandemic, when we had to go to our reveals being via Zoom because we needed to limit contact, as an artist, you got a little bit of that feedback from them, but that energy of being in person and seeing tears or that reaction and that visceral, just, they can't control their reaction to that imagery on the screen. That's amazing. That's what drives me to constantly bring my A game. Not that what we do is life or death, but for all the good that I can show you in imagery, I could tear you down and show you all the horrible things and destroy your confidence. And I don't ever want to have that happen to any of my clientele. I've had clients that have come to me that have had experiences like that with other photographers and having to rebuild that trust that we're not going to do that same thing that someone else didn't take care of with them. That's how I always approach each and every one of my clients. For Badoua, normally women are the ones that have been perceived to be the models. There's been a rise in men posing for Badoua. What are some of the benefits for men looking to put themselves in front of the camera and do a Badoua session? It's incredibly similar to women. Um, a lot of my male clientele, when we get them in studio, they have the same insecurities that women do about their body. They don't think they look the way that they do. And it was very funny. I had a client that I've shot her three times, and she bought a session for her husband. 
and normally I don't allow significant others in on the reveal. I want that person to be the first voice that they hear and the only voice that they're hearing when they see their images. But where she was a previous client and she knew how things went, I let her sit in and when she sat there and watched his reaction as he had all the same emotions and no, that can't, no, that's not me. And as images went through, it was incredible to see and this is a gentleman who is an incredibly fit person. He's a semi-pro boxer, so he's in shape, incredible body, but he doesn't see that in himself. And seeing that same reaction and then seeing her react to him was incredible. Same thing now with the rise in male boudoir is couples celebrating their relationship together in couples boudoir. And it's that same thing where they're celebrating that special spark. It's not necessarily about the imagery of their bodies or whatnot, it's more the experience in the session, what I've heard from the couples, that that reconnection and celebrating their relationship. What do you consider to be one of the biggest misconceptions about boudoir? Biggest misconceptions about boudoir is to the average person who doesn't know what it is, they think it's porn. And it is the furthest thing from that. They think that it is about object objectifying whoever the subject may be, male, female, couple, and that's not what it's about. It's about building up a confidence or un taking off all of the things that life puts on us. And women, especially more so than men, have this ability to put the weight of the world on their shoulders and keep stacking it and keep stacking it, just like men do. But men don't feel guilty about reprioritizing themselves women seem to have a level of guilt when doing it and I watch it with my own wife where she'll stack everything in all of us and it's like take something for yourself and boudoir does that it's that ultimate reset where you're either going to see yourself like you've never seen yourself before or you're going to see a new side of yourself and to see genuine tears start flowing at a reveal when the images come up and they can't control it and they've never expected that or to have them come in and say oh I just want to get digital images and then they leave with a giant piece of wall art because they're proud of who they are and they want to share that so it's it's something that I'm extremely passionate about and I think it shows in my work in the way that I go about running my business and because of that you and your wife took over the AIBP is that correct Yes, in 2021, um, August, we acquired the Association of International Boudoir Photographers. Um, this is a group and it was probably one of the most formative, educational and impactful things in my career for boudoir because I'd been a member since 2013 and the people that I met through being part of this association, the education that I received and overall not that it's competition, but having these friends where you see that they're putting out this level of work and you push yourself to be at their level in a friendly competition type of essence. The fact that going to their educational retreats that started in 2015, I'd go and get to learn from these world-class educators and not only sit in the class, but the way that the education structured is Everyone's there for the entire weekend. It's a true retreat. So you're getting to sit there and pick the brains of these people that you admire and are learning from and ask the questions that in a larger group environment you might not have thought of or you've got a little bit of just stage fright to ask. And you can sit there in a one-on-one -on -one environment and talk to these artists and really learn. And that's what we've really tried to continue since we bought it and taking it to that next level. Um, and then the fact that if this had gone away, the boudoir image sort of would have taken a hit because, like I said, the average misconception is that it's porn or that it's a dirty, taboo thing. We're fighting against that image, not only within general population, but within the photo industry as a whole. We are looked upon as a lesser genre, a misunderstood genre where <coughs> People who don't shoot it or expose themselves to it don't truly get the power that's behind our portraiture. And to your point, you might see a classical piece of art that has nudity and that's okay and admire. 
yet on the flip side is perceived this way, which is unfortunate because the beauty behind it is great. And plus the artistry behind to get the lighting the right way, the attire, whatever it might be, it's, it's fascinating. It takes a lot of work. It's not an easy genre to just jump into and get it right. Um, especially if you're someone who shoots more dramatic and editorial like I do, um, where I'm posing down to their fingertips. I'm lighting specifically shot by shot. Um, if you're more of a lifestyle shooter, it's a little bit easier journey because you're not as worried about that. But the client experience that we've built with our studio is to give them that bombshell experience. And it's what has become the nickname for all of our clients through the years of, oh yeah, no, I'm a bombshell. And now all of our clients end up referred to as bombshells or CB men. And it's sort of that badge of honor where they love wearing our swag with bombshell across it, which is really humbling when you look at it and you've established a brand that people are wearing your logo. That's funny, that's funny. Uh, given that you've been to a few expos here and there, do you have any memorable moments? Uh, maybe anything that might have happened at a Taco Bell or a Burger King? <laughs> um, yeah, since you know the behind-the-scenes story of this, at actually the very first um, ABP uh, retreat, I was heading back to the airport with uh, a couple of other photographers, and we... We're rolling in a black uh, Escalade, all blacked out windows was the rental, and we got a little bit lost and ended up in Englewood, California, which uh, anyone who listens to rap, especially Snoop or Dr. Dre, knows the reputation for Englewood and Compton, and one of us had to go to the bathroom, not me, uh, and we ended up pulling into a Taco Bell with bulletproof glass on the takeout window, <laughs> and then we turn and look the other direction, and there is a drug bus going in the Burger King parking lot where there's nice. perps across the back of the car and I'm like yeah we're in a black Escalade which looks like it's got spinners we gotta get out of here <laughs> that's funny that's really hilarious man and I'm actually uh, I'm interviewing the counterpart of that story so that'll be that'll be you that'll definitely be, have to ask her about it as well I'll ask, I'll ask her perspective she's the one that had to go to the bathroom <laughs> um, do you live by any quote or any belief that gets you going or something that you instill in your family um, for me, one of the things that, and again, it's a movie quote, I love pop culture, it drives me, I'm a huge cinema buff, and I watch to learn lighting techniques and cool new things, but one quote that has always been sort of my philosophy from one of the greatest movies ever, Ferris Bueller, uh, life moves pretty fast, if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might miss it, and with photography, I feel that what we are doing is we are taking that moment to stop, freeze that moment so that we can look back on it, not only just enjoy it in the moment. And that's sort of how I try and live my life is take the time. We're only here once for a very finite amount of time and we don't know when that clock ticks zero. So take the time to enjoy your kids, take the time to travel, meet others, create art, and don't get caught up too much in the business of, I need to be a million dollar studio, or I need to make multiple six figures. Yes, we all want to be successful, and there's a lot of hypocrisy within the photo industry where it's become an arms race of, you need to make this much money to be considered successful, or have this much of an average sale. Do you where you find happiness and you're supporting your family and your business and your art is satisfying you, that's what you need to focus on, not what's the other person doing and how do I get past them? Because it ultimately doesn't matter. I agree, I agree, that's great. Uh, before I forget, where can people find not only your work but also the AIBP? So my uh, personal studio is Couture Black and that is uh, coutureblack.com. AIBP is aibpphotog.com, so only one P in the, um, in the URL. And you can join us on Facebook at uh, the AIBP member community. It is a free join there, but in order to take advantage of the full membership, you can join on the website. And on Instagram, it's Couture Black Photo or AIBP Photog. Fantastic. Sean, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're busy, but... Thank you for joining. 
No, I am thrilled, and I'm looking forward to listening to your other interviews because the lineup that you had is absolutely incredible. Me too, man. I'm excited. Well, enjoy the rest of imaging, and uh, we will catch up later. I'm sure I'll see you around. Awesome. Awesome.